He is mercy. And indeed, Sandra, he is still the God of wonders. He is still the God of wonders. Hallelujah. My apologies. Time is fast spent already. And we need to continue. If you cannot do with my face, then we will just make a plan. Hallelujah. Okay, I think we are good to go. Father, God of mercy, you're welcome in this place. God of mercy, have your way. God of mercy, speak to us this morning. Hallelujah. As I was saying, the journey to greatness can be difficult outside the mercies of God. In the book of Romans chapter 9 verse 13 to 16, the Bible says, Just as it is written, Jacob I loved, but Esau I hated. What then shall we say? Is God unjust? Not at all. For he says to Moses, I have mercy on whom I have mercy. And I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. It does not therefore depend on human desire or effort, but it depends on the mercy of God. Somebody say God's mercy. God's mercy is what I want to interrogate this morning as we seek him in prayer, as we invite him into this fellowship this morning, as we invite him on this altar, may somebody contact the mercy of God. God's mercy is available. God's mercy shall be made available. You will not go back empty handed, but the mercy of God shall be made available. I read Romans chapter nine, verse 13 to 16 again, so that we understand that certain things cannot happen but for the mercy of God. We understand that this thing is not about justification or unjustification, but it is by the mercy of God. As it is written, Jacob I love, but Esau I hated. What then shall we say to these things? Shall we say that God is an unjust God? After all, he has said, for he says to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I have mercy. I'm the one that decides. You don't buy this mercy. You don't, you don't, you don't manipulate this mercy. I will have compassion compassion on whom I will have compassion. You cannot manipulate me into doing anything. You cannot bribe me into doing anything. It does not therefore depend on your desire or your efforts, but it depends on the mercy of God. So I believe and I begin to understand as I trek through the scriptures that mercy of God presents itself in several ways. First, the mercy of God, I understand that it is great. It is the mercy of God that is great. Somebody write, God's mercy is great. It is great. G-R-E-A-T. God's mercy is great. The Bible says in the book of Isaiah chapter 54 verse 7, For a small moment have I forsaken thee, but with great mercies will I gather thee. With great mercies will I gather thee. With great mercies will I gather thee. Father, gather us with your great mercy. Secondly, what I began to understand when I look and interrogate the subject of mercy is that the mercies of God are sure. God's mercy is sure. It's certain. S-U-R-E. His mercy is sure. Isaiah 55 verse 3 says, Incline your ear and come unto me. Hear and, and, and your soul shall live. If your ears can be open enough, then your life is certain, is guaranteed. Your soul shall live. And I will make an everlasting covenant with you and the, even the sure mercies of David. So it's a guaranteed, it's an assurance. His mercies are sure. Number three, the mercies of God are abandoned. Somebody write abandoned. God's mercy is abandoned. That means it's more than enough. It's overflowing. Because 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 3 says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto a lively hope and by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Let me read it again so that you understand. I'm on the third witness. I know the Bible says just get two witnesses. I'm on the third witness now. I'm giving you a third witness from the scripture. He says, blessed be the God of our father, Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy. So Peter lets us know that he has a mercy that is in abundance, never runs out. He has begotten us to a lively hope by the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ 
from the dead. The fourth witness that I bring for you this morning is that his mercies are tender. Tender, T-E-N-D-E-R. The mercies of God are tender. The book of Psalms, chapter 25, verse 6, the psalmist says, Remember, O Lord, thy tender mercies and thy loving kindness, for they have been ever old, or ever of old. Your mercies are tender. You are gentle with me, my God. And this morning, you bring that gentility to us this morning. And here's the one that I love the most. The fifth witness I bring to you is that his mercies are new every morning. New every morning. His mercies are new every morning. Lamentations chapter 3 verse 23 to 22. Lamentations chapter 3 verse 22 to 23 says, It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed. They would have finished you, but for the mercy of God. They would have destroyed you, but for the mercy of God. He says, because his compassions fail not. He does not fail when it comes to compassion. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness, O God. So when I feel that I have been depleted the previous day, they are new every morning. When I feel that I've come to the end of myself, there's something waiting for me in the morning season. Somebody say they are new every morning. I may have cried through the night. I may have wept through the night. But there is something that is coming in the morning. One thing is for sure is that day and night seasons have to shift way to morning and light seasons. Morning shall surely come. Not the morning that makes you cry, but the morning that is M-O-R-N-I-N-G-S. Thank God for the morning. Thank God that joy cometh in the morning. Weeping may last for a night, but joy comes in the morning. And with that joy comes the mercies that are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness, O God. They are new every morning, new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. Is somebody seeing the new mercies of God? Have you experienced the new mercies of God? Without mercy, child of God, your destiny will be a mess up. That is why you need a mercy of God to gather your destiny. What gives meaning to life is the mercy of God. Therefore, what is mercy? Let us ask. Mercy means that partiality has been allowed to step in into your life. It is that divine partiality because I know mankind likes impartiality, but mercy brings divine partiality when it steps in. Mercy is when God decided to break protocol for certain people in the Bible. Mercy is when God has decided to show up this morning and to break protocol for me and you. When mercy is at work, when mercy is at work, you would have come to your last hope. When mercy is at work, You will be the last to come and you will be the first to go. Oh, I love that. You have come last, but you are the first to go. That is an overtaking anointing. You came last. They thought you're not going to make it. You came last. They thought you're not going to make it, but you were the first to go. Because mercy erases the fact that you were late. Mercy erases whatever intervention of evil might have had its hand in your life. Mercy means that now divine favoritism is at work. When mercy steps in, it means it overrules every human type of law. Laws are broken. Protocols are broken because his mercies are here. God overrules every single human law. Divine acceptance 
against human reaction. That is God's mercy at work. When you are ruled out, when you are deleted from the list, mercy puts your name at number one. Oh, somebody shout number one. When you are writing that number one on the screen, you are saying you are declaring God has put you first. Number one, when they deleted your name, when they kept on shifting the files and they said, hmm, this one, and they kept on shifting the files and they put it in drawer X, God said, no, number one. When they are about to bequeath an inheritance, they said, where is she? Where is he? When a king had to be anointed, they looked for David. They said, there's one missing. There's number eight missing. You don't have seven sons. There's number eight missing. That number eight is supposed to be number one. That number eight is supposed to be number one. Some of you don't understand what is happening in your families. You don't understand that certain things cannot happen. There's an elderly child that was born first, but they are probably, I don't want to call them useless, but nothing happens until you've spoken and you don't understand because you say I'm the last born. You don't understand because you're sitting somewhere in the middle, but mercy says nothing can be done unless that one speaks. Some of you are the cause of a blessing of your family. Your family would not have been even living until now. But for you who stood and stood in prayer, but for you, God had to break protocols just for you. God had to save your family just for you. Some of you are working for establishments which were supposed to have gone down long ago. But because God says, I cannot bring calamity, this company cannot go down because that my child who is in that company has to make sure that the kingdom expands. Ah, Jesus. My God. When they ruled you out, when they deleted your name from the list, Jesus said, mm -mm. The God of mercy puts you first. Mercy means divinity is interested in what you're doing, in who you are. Mercy means unusual intervention of God in human affairs. Somebody is destined for an unusual intervention this week. Oh God. I forgot to post the testimony. Somebody said to me, send me a message. You say, Pastor, indeed, this is the week of, 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 of God of answers because a director in the company came to ask for my CV specifically. Do you understand that there's nothing you are moving? There's nothing you are doing. They just come and ask for you and pull you from the back. Aya, Kona Mahasha. This is somebody who was praying for a permanent job, praying for recognition. Somebody just comes, say, can I please have your CV? That is, that shows you that this God of answers, this God of mercy is making people lose sleep just to promote you. God of mercy. God of mercy is making Sipo's name appear on the list, top of the list. Matthew chapter 17, verse 1 to 2. We see Jesus singling out three disciples out of the 12. Three disciples single out out of the 12. The same way that Matthew chapter 17, and we see Jesus taking three out of 12. I declare and I declare prophetically that in this week, mercy will single you out. Before the end of this week, before the end of this month, before the end of this year, mercy will single you out. Somebody pray that prayer through. Say, mercy, single me out. Single me out. It doesn't matter that they think I'm special. I'm special like that. It doesn't matter that they say, I think I'm, as, I'm better than sliced bread. I'm good like that. Oh, Jesus. Because sometimes we're even too afraid to shine because we're afraid that others cannot take our glow. Baby, glow. God is going to make you glow. God is going to single you out in Jesus' mighty name. We can be on the same level, but God's mercy puts us in classes. We may all look like children of God, but there's classes. 
God's mercy puts us in classes. Esther chapter 2 verse 15 to 7. It was the turn for Esther. He was on a, she was on a class of her own. There were other beautiful women, but she was on a class of her own. It was the turn of Esther. Today I decree and I declare that it is your turn. Somebody shout, it's my turn. Mucha, there is a time and a season when it switches and it becomes your turn. Janil, it is your turn this morning. Daughter Mark, it is your turn this morning. Pearl, this is your turn. It's my turn. It's my turn. It's my turn. It's my turn. Can you say it's my turn, Patsy? It's your turn, Gundo. It's your turn, Pum Pum. It's your turn. Do not be afraid of people that have gone ahead of you. The fact that they are ahead of you doesn't mean that they will get there before you. I prophesy before the end of this year, God will give you speed. Speed for your feet before the end of this year. You vodya, you vodya, God is giving you speed. God is giving you speed. Somebody who needs that speed, tap into that word. Life is a mystery. They will look at you and be puzzled. God is giving you speed. It is not what, or it is not what you look like or the makeup that you may put up and you may look like you are slaying. Hear me. It's not your makeup that will make you. It is not how you look and how you are dolled up that makes you. But it is God that makes you. You see, even on this social media, you may think that you are mapped out. You may think that you are an influencer and you're on Facebook. No. Your face may be on Facebook, but it, is it in the book that needs to be counted? Is it in the book of life? Is it, is, are you being booked? Are you being patronized in your business? It is God's mercy. You see, that's why you may have different businesses. They're all good people. They all manufacture nice things. They all produce nice things. But what makes you become the one that they patronize? What puts you on the map? It is the mercy of God that breaks protocols and says they will jump all those other three stores that sell the same thing and come to you. What will make other people jump? All the other event managers, consultants, whatever that makes you become the one that's selected. It is the mercy of God. The king loved Esther above all women. Vasti was vacated. Vasti had to shift out. Whoever is occupying your seat, they must vacate that seat this morning. Whoever is occupying your place in destiny, I decree and I declare and I command, they will vacate it now in the name of Jesus. That seat must be vacated now in the name of Jesus Christ. When Esther appeared before the king, something went ahead of Esther. Mercy prepared the way. May mercy prepare the way for you, PVP. May mercy prepare the way. Somebody pray me through. Pray yourself through. Mercy prepare a way for me. Mercy prepare a way for me. Among all your competitors, mercy will put you on a class of your own. Hear me, child of God. Hear me, Ulibile. It is not your location. But it is God that gives you the allocation. It is not about the location at times. It is about the allocation that God has chosen to give you. Put me anywhere in this world, on this earth. Leave me with mercy. Leave me with the mercy of God and see how God turns things around. Oh, Jesus. Sometimes the best don't receive the best.
But it is mercy that settles the case. Because somebody is asking themselves a question and says, I'm good at what you do. I do. I have the qualifications and I have everything. Oh God, let me speak this word. I don't know whether you are listening, persuade. This word, if you're going to re-listen, if you're here, you're probably on Facebook and I don't see you right now. You've asked yourself, don't they not see I have a master's degree? Do they not see that I'm busy with my PhD? Do they not see all the stripes that I have earned? Do they not see that I'm the best at what I do? Why is life not answering? Why is God seemingly not answering? I want you to call on the mercy of God. Mercy must settle my case. Somebody pray me through. Pray that prayer. Mercy, settle the case. Let the mercy of God settle this case once and for all. Let the mercy of God settle this case. God, I understand. I don't wish bad on others, but I just need mercy to settle this case. I need mercy to tell me and validate the fact that I have been called for a purpose as well. I need mercy to settle the case so that I can shine forth with my family that I'm also represented. Any satisfaction via the mercies of God comes in the best time. Father, let it be the best time for me. Let this be my turn and let this be my time. It is my turn. It is my time. It is my season. This is the best time for mercy to just settle the case so that all the mouths can be silenced in Jesus' mighty name. I cannot have left my country and come this far to this point and come this far and still be questioned, where is your God? My parents could not have sacrificed so much. You struggle to put yourself through school. You, tr- you struggle to pay school fees. You manage to graduate. Mercy settled this case once and for all. You thought that jobs would be easy and would come. God, settle this mercy and give me direction. Where is my jubilee? Where is the point where I celebrate? Where? Where? God speak. Let the mercy of God intervene. Thank you, Jesus. Hebrews 4, 16 gives us the assurance that mercy is obtainable. Father, I want to get this mercy. Because you see, child of God, without mercy after graduation, you may find yourself grounded. I know when you listen to the career guidance teacher, they told you that if you do this job, it is guaranteed. But no. You need to continuously call upon the mercy of God so that he settles this thing. So that you're not grounded. I prophesy PBP on your life. You will not be grounded in Jesus' mighty name. You will not be grounded in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. May the mercy of God bring speed. May the mercy of God bring beautification. May the mercy of God make your certificates glow. May the mercy of God open up the windows of heaven and you see your wisdom, your mindset, your eyes, your ears will be open to see opportunities. Your eyes and ears will be seeing opportunities. Visions will begin to come. Dreams will begin to come. You will not walk in a path that is seemingly narrow. But may God show you what it is that he wants you to do in your life. Some of you, I need you to break out of the mold of your qualifications. Where you think that your breakthrough comes in the season of your qualifications. No, God operates outside. God wants to color you outside the lanes. Because I feel you you, you limit yourself. But God may bring a breakthrough anyway. So be alert. You will not be grounded. As you go out this morning to your workplaces and anywhere that you will be going, whatever direction, don't leave your, your house anyway without asking the mercies of God. Father, those mercies that I knew this morning, please release them for me. Let mercy speak for me. As I step out, As I step out of the workplace and go home, let mercy speak for me. 
Because child of God, when mercy is speaking for you, your life cannot be explained. I pray that you step into the season of those kind of testimonies where they cannot explain you. When mercy is speaking for you, people cannot understand how it works. Hear me, those of you who are parents, what gives success to your children is not the money you have spent on them. It is the mercy of God. Because you may have spent all the money that you have to try and make this child's life work, but it is the mercy that will speak. Sometimes it's not who you know that matters, but it's the mercy of God that speaks. It is not everyone that got to the top that struggled to get there. Understand there's some people, you, that is why sometimes people are envious of, of certain people and you are jealous of certain people sometimes because you're like, how did they get it so easily? But it is mercy. Sometimes I struggle with this myself because apostle would say to me, it's not everything that you need that you have to pay for. Sometimes God will just make things. And I, I struggled with that because I'm used to hustling for myself. I'm used to just wanting to pay for everything. It's not everyone that got to the top that struggled to get there. So if others didn't have to struggle to get there, trust me, the same grace and the same mercy is available for you. Mercy must speak in your life. In this life, the only thing that is constant, child of God, is the mercy of God. Because the Bible says they are new every morning. So that means you're loaded daily with his mercy. Child of God, until the people begin to envy you. My prayer for you is that you will experience the order of blessings until people are starting to envy you. May you become the envy of people. So that you can testify, I'm blessed. The Bible says God blessed Isaac and the Philistines envied him. God blessed Isaac and the Philistines envied him. May nations envy you in Jesus' mighty name. May you experience the wonders of his mercy. I prophesy in your life this morning, you will be preferred above others in Jesus' mighty name. You will be preferred above others. You will be preferred above others. Mercy will make your life attractive. That magnetic force that will add that attractiveness to your life, to everything that you will do, receive it now in Jesus' mighty name. That magnetic force that will bring attraction, that will draw the right kind of people to you. May you receive it now in Jesus' mighty name. May you receive the mercy that will single you out of the crowd in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. May you receive the mercy that will link you up with helpers of destiny in Jesus' mighty name. May you receive the mercy that will link you up with people that will bless you in, and assist you in the name of Jesus Christ. I decree and I declare in the order of Psalms 118 verse 7 that you are too blessed to be common. 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 You are too, I am not a commoner. I am not a commoner. I'm too blessed to be common. I prophesy and I decree and I declare that you are receiving the mercy that will command supernatural favor in your life. I declare and I decree that mercy will precede the favor in your life. That when you have received mercy, favor will step in. Put that cherry on top in Jesus' mighty name. I decree and I declare that as I pray right now, mercy that will give you access into places that you would ordinarily not have been able to enter. Receive it now in the name of Jesus Christ. I prophesy that this morning you will receive mercy that will cover your errors, that will cover your mistakes in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, any error you have committed shall not be noticeable in Jesus' mighty name. May the mercy of God overrule your errors. May the mercy of God overrule your errors. May the mercy of God overrule your errors, overrule your mistakes in the mighty name of Jesus. 
May the places where you deserve judgment, when the judgment was supposed to be guilty, when the judgment was supposed to be saying pay up, may mercy prevail over that judgment. You deserved it. You did the crime. But I'm asking for mercy to prevail over that judgment so that you don't have to pay the sentence. May mercy prevail over people that have been trying to find faults in everything you do. Every time you turn around, they try to, I call them fault finders. May mercy prevail and shut their mouths in Jesus' mighty name. May mercy prevail over people who are trying to publicize your mistakes, even in the workplace that don't want to give you a chance. May mercy prevail. If somebody shout, mercy prevail and mercy speak. Mercy speak. Oh, Jesus. Those people that are waiting for your day of shame, I command their disappointment in Jesus' mighty name. Father, those who are waiting to shame me, may they be disappointed. May they be disappointed. May they be disappointed. In the name of Jesus. May mercy give you divine settlement in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. May mercy humiliate your adversaries in the mighty name of Jesus. May mercy make them change their testimonies about you. Father, what our enemies want us to be, they will be disappointed in the name of Jesus. They will be disappointed in the name of Jesus. Hear me and hear me well. They will be disappointed in the mighty name of Jesus. It is not of him who wills, nor him who runs, but it is of God who shows mercy. God of mercy, show up for us this week in Jesus' mighty name. Mercy is an attribute of God. May God show you mercy. Ephesians 2, 4 says, But God who is rich in mercy, because his great love, because of his great love with which he loved us. May God show you mercy. You may not fully grasp the characteristics and those inherent traits that are in the mercy of God. You may not grasp the depths of the mercies of God. But hear me. This is what I know. His mercies are from everlasting to everlasting. When he, the Bible says they are from everlasting to everlasting, it means, means that they are beyond us. May you find a deeper understanding of what the mercies of God represent. And I pray for you that you may take advantage of what the mercies of God represent. Child of God, when divine mercy is at work, it brings salvation. It brings deliverance. It was by the, the, the death and the resurrection of Christ that provided you with the solid proof that God has mercy for mankind in store. We would have been in eternal damnation but for the mercies of God. If he did not save us, we would have been damned. Titus chapter 3 verse 5, he says, Not by works of the righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy he has saved us. Through the washing of, re uh, of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Spirit. It is not me. It is the mercy. The Apostle Paul says in the book of 1 Timothy chapter 1 verse 6, For this reason I obtained mercy. Because God had an assignment. I know everyone around me thought I'm useless. I know everyone thought I'm not going to amount to anything. But it is, it, there was a reason that God kept me. Somebody, that is your testimony. You don't understand how God saved you from that addiction. It is his mercy. When you understand the nature of the mercies of God, you understand that divine mercy triggers the miraculous. They don't understand why it looks like you are just the only candidate for the God of wonders to release miracles in your life. Trigger the miraculous in my life this week in Jesus' mighty name. 
Divine mercy when it's at work. Healings become the order of the day. Blind Bartimaeus cried to Jesus. He says, Lord, have mercy on me. And Jesus stood still. Have you seen it? In Luke chapter 18 verse 39, the Bible says, Jesus stood still. May you pray the kind of prayers that makes Jesus stand still. May you pray and call on the mercy of God that will make heaven stand still. May you call on the mercy of God that will make your answer be delivered on the first day. Not day one, not, not day two, but on day one. Father, I don't need an answer on day seven. I need the answer on day one. And I need the visibility of day one so that I don't sit here for 21 days. An extra 20 days wrestling for something that has already been released. The divine mercies of God that are available for us this morning trigger unusual protection. Father, may I be never lacking of unusual protection. You are protected. When you track through the scriptures, Lot was exempted from the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah in the book of Genesis chapter 19 verse 16. The angel sent by God to destroy Sodom had to practically drag Lot out of Sodom. And in verse 16, the Bible says the angels took his hand and took the, his wife and, and, and those of his wife and children and brought him out. The Lord being merciful to him. That is what the scripture says. The Lord had to be merciful to Lord and drag him out. Father, wherever any PBP member is stuck, I don't know which one is their Sodom right now. Wherever your family members are stuck, right now I want to pray those who are under addiction. There are those of you, your children are facing serious addictions, drugs and alcohol. May God pull them out. May angels go pull them out. The same order how Lot was brought out, may you, they be brought out. If it is you struggling with addiction, I command that you will be brought out in the name of Jesus Christ. May the Lord bring you out. May the angels bring you out. May you be brought out by the mercy of God. Father, we have cried as parents. We have believed. Father, bring out my children from wrongful associations. Bring them out from wrongful associations, anything that will drag their future, anything that will slow down their pace. Father, drag them out in the name of Jesus by the mercy of God. In Jesus' mighty name. Our children will not be stuck. You will not be stuck in any type of foolishness. Your spouse will not be stuck in any type of foolishness. Father, we pray whatever they made that man that husband that father that man who's supposed to stand for his house whatever they gave him as a concoction whatever love potion that is making that man behave like a silly billy that does not understand that he has to raise his family and stand and protect his family. Father, let them cough it out. Let them vomit it out in the name of Jesus Christ. Let the angels drag that man from that unholy and culture. I don't know whatever it is. That strange woman's house. Father, let there be a restoration of marriages by the mercies of God. Let the mercy of God restore families this morning. Let the mercy of God restore marriages this morning. Wherever anyone has been dragged to, let them be dragged out. Whoever needs to come and behave like a normal father, you said that which God has joined together. Let no man put asunder. Father, I speak to the evil altars that are challenging families and marriages right now. I command the breaking of chains. I command that anything planted within those individuals, Father God, let it be uprooted. Let there be a quick restoration and confessions that will come out that will show that you are God. There is no evil that can hold the man or a, a woman of God. 
I uproot that spouse from that cage. I uproot. And anyone that is in your house troubling you that is not supposed to be in your house, I uproot them. If they don't live of their own accord, I call on the God that consumes by fire. Some of you are in marriages where in-laws are just a thorn in your flesh and they have decided to make themselves impossible. Father, you are the God of possibilities. Show yourself. Scatter them. You see, ordinarily we don't pray that calamity falls on those, but I'm, I'm joking, but we probably do. Anyone who's making your life miserable, uncomfortable, discomfortable, I, I will break English. Anybody, whether it is in your workplace, in your family, your neighbors, father, scatter them, scatter their lives, bring confusion into their camps in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, let mercy be released. Show us the secret of this divine mercy this morning. That they may seek mercies from God of heaven concerning the secret so that Daniel and his companions might not perish with the rest of the wise men of Babylon. I release the divine mercy that offers you forgiveness. Forgiveness of sins where you have missed it. Receive the forgiveness of the Lord. The Bible says in Ephesians 1.17 in whom you have had redemption through his blood. The forgiveness of sins according to his riches and grace. You have received the redemption and the forgiveness of sins. The Lord wants to show his mercy upon you, PVP, this morning. It is our responsibility to connect to this mercy. And all I'm here to do this morning is to tell you that his mercy is available. If you pray for this mercy... I urge you to touch heaven by crying out for this mercy. Let the God of mercy show up for you. God is a God of mercy. Somebody type it one more time. God of mercy. What makes God God is his mercy. The mercy of God is the answer to the helplessness of men. The mercy of God is the answer to the darkness of life. Wherever you are overwhelmed with the works of darkness in your life, what to apply for is the mercy of God. That is the application you need to put through. The mercy of God is the answer to the emptiness of life. Whenever you are confronted with the emptiness of life, I want you to apply the mercy of God. The mercy of God is the doorway to the wholeness of life that you are requiring. Hey, somebody say God of mercy. The mercy of God is the answer to the wickedness of the enemy in the mighty name of Jesus. What then is the way of mercy, Pastor Fortune? Mercy happens to those who believe. Mercy happens to those who believe. When you believe that the goodness of God is stronger than the badness of the enemy, then you shall have the mercy of God. Somebody shout, I believe. Mercy happens to those who cry for it. You don't sit in a corner and have pity parties. Open your mouth like blind Bartimaeus and cry out for his mercy. Father, we cry out for mercy this morning. We thank you for your word to us this morning. To you be all the glory and adoration in Jesus' mighty name. And as, oh God, as we cry out for this mercy, we declare, pro declare prophetically, oh God, that every altar that has been tying down our lives, every chain that has been tying down our destiny, let it be broken in Jesus' mighty name right now by the mercy of God. In the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we decree and we declare that every deposit and every stranger in the life of anyone that is represented here this morning, oh God, let it be set on fire in Jesus' mighty name. I prophesy and I decree by the mercy of God that everything that has been corrupted in your life right now, 
now it is corrected. Everything that was corrupted, I command a correction and a restoration in the name of Jesus Christ. I prophesy to you, PBP, by the mercy of God, that everything that is corrupted in your life shall be corrected in Jesus' mighty name. Anything that has been dead in your life, it is coming back to life right now. Anything that has been dead in your life, it is coming back to life in Jesus' mighty name. Any stranger occupying any department of your life, whether it is in your office, whether it is in your marriage, any stranger occupying your life right now, I command them to live in Jesus' mighty name. I decree and I declare that everything, every case that is involving you today, God will deliver you from that case in the name of Jesus. Your victory is guaranteed by the mercy of God in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Jesus. Whatever they have said to you in the spiritual realm, whatever they have said to you in the physical realm, that verdict is canceled. That verdict is canceled. That verdict is canceled. That verdict is canceled in the name of Jesus. That ancestral curse that generational curse is reversed in the name of Jesus. That evil mark that you woke up with on your body, that you don't know how it got there. It is reversed, it is cancelled. That evil mark on your life, that evil mark of rejection, that evil mark of frustration, that evil mark of singleness, that evil mark of depression, whatever they have branded your life with that is working against you in the name of Jesus, I declare that thing is deleted in the name of Jesus. Today, everywhere they looked at you, and reacted against you with rejection. I declare that it is over. Somebody shout it is over. It is over in the name of Jesus. The mercy of God will deliver you. The mercy of God will deliver you from the wickedness of the enemy today. The mercy of God will open doors that the enemy has closed. In Jesus mighty name. Let mercy speak. Let mercy speak. Let mercy speak. When mercy speaks, the love of God shall be seen. Because mercy is an extension and expression of love. Mercy is an extension of kindness. Mercy is an extension of compassion. Father, let me see your compassion. Mercy is an extension of favor. Father, may I see your favor? Who is God? He is mercy. Mercy is his character. Mercy is his true nature. Who is God? He is mercy. Mercy is like a well that is filled with water. So God is saying, I'm quenching your thirst, PVP. I'm washing all those dirty garments so that you appear neat. I'm washing the garment of shame. I'm washing the garment of depression. I'm washing the garment of rejection. I'm washing you. Mercy is water. Receive that water. He says, I'm bathing you. I'm quenching your thirst. I'm washing you. When you drink of this water this morning, you are quenched. Your thirst is quenched. When you drink of this water of mercy, he says, you are drinking forgiveness. You are drinking love. You are drinking healing. You are drinking the truth that I am. You are drinking my goodness. You are drinking every other thing that will help you for the journey that you're on. He says, it is out of my merciful heart that I've showed you love. 
It is out of my merciful heart that I've sent you my only begotten son so that he can redeem you from the bondage of sin and reconcile you back to me. Now, having known that this mercy is so deep, wherever this mercy you will call on it, it will speak. Whenever you call on this mercy, protocols will be broken. Whenever you call on this mercy, protocols will be suspended. Impossibility will become possibility. Dry bones shall live again. Hallelujah. Dry bones shall live again as we call on this mercy. Today, by the reason of the God of mercy, I prophesy that every evil handwriting of any ordinance against anyone who's represented here right now, that evil hand is rolling out. Every judgment seat is turning to the mercy seat right now. You are seated on the mercy seat right now in Jesus' mighty name. May mercy of God locate the dry bones. Those dry bones in the valley of lamentations. I prophesy to the dry bones to come alive in Jesus' mighty name. Mercy, locate the dry bones. Let them come alive in Jesus' mighty name. Today, let every dried favor and unfavorable conditions in your life, let them receive a fresh breath. Let them receive a fresh breath. Let them receive a fresh breath. Breathe on these dry bones, oh God, in Jesus' name. Let there be a suspension of protocols. In the book of Psalms, chapter 103, verse 14 to 13, there is a suspension of protocols. God, in his infinite mercy, who knows our weaknesses. God, in his infinite mercy, who knows our limitation. Who knows that we are incapacitated at times. The same God. Declared to Moses and said, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy. No, it is not of him who willeth, nor him who runs, but of God who shows us mercy. God show PBP mercy. Oh, Jesus. Show me mercy. Show me mercy if I'm to see your face this morning. Show me mercy. By the mercy of God Almighty in the name of Jesus Christ, I command every demonic activity, every demonic agent, demonic ghost to jump out of your life forever in Jesus' mighty name. Let them jump out by fire. Let them flee because what God is about to unleash in your life has no room for them. Mercy will speak. My father, my father, let any garment that I have been wearing. Maybe you have been wearing garments that are unknown to you. You did not even know you are wearing them. Any garment that has been a hindrance in your life, any garment that has been speaking delay in your life, by the mercy of God, they are removed this morning in Jesus' mighty name. Your expectation shall not be cut off in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. You are stepping into the mercy of God. And that same mercy of God, I prophesy, it will shield you from the anger of your enemies. I prophesy that what the enemy has planned, the mercies of God will overtake in Jesus' mighty name. I prophesy that the mercy of God will rescue you from every single form of affliction, every single form of, of, of misery in your life. May mercy pull you out of poverty. May mercy pull you out of poverty. I pray that the mercy of God will give you direction in your life in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. You don't have to live like you are forsaken and you are alone. God has not left you to yourself. You will not just be there by yourself. May God pull you out of the mess and bring you into the messy seat. May divine direction be the order of the day. May divine direction and divine mercy be the order of your day in Jesus' mighty name.
May God pull you out of the wrong steps that the enemy thought you are going to step into in Jesus' mighty name. You will not have any wrong moves. The mercy of God that will unleash judgment on your enemies. Receive it now in Jesus' mighty name. Those of you who are in a lowly state and you are feeling down, may the mercy of God remember you and pull you up. That inferiority confidence or self, low self-confidence, low self-esteem, may God pull you out. When the world is saying financial calamity, when the world is screaming recession, when the world is screaming depression, may God pull you out. May God remember you. When you say the things are low, I'm low in spirit, Pastor Fortune, you don't understand. Mercy is pulling you out right now. Do you not see the hand of God that is reaching out and trying to pull you out? Can you just also stretch out your hand? You see, sometimes when you're in church, when they tell you worship, when you lift up your hands towards the heavens and you say, God, you say, God, pull me up because I can't pull myself up. God, pull me up. I can't do it on my own. God is saying, I'm bringing mercy to you. When you're under the mercy of God, you can't be under the mercy of anyone else or anything else. No, sir. If you are to be preserved, it's better you are preserved under the mercy of God and the mercies of heaven. May the compassion of God pull you into action this morning because he never fails. His compassion will back up his resources. His compassion will release wisdom and power in your life. And you begin to realize that there is no capacity to fail. Somebody shout, I cannot fail. I cannot fail because God is pulling me out of this thing. I cannot fail because compassion is at work. And his compassion never expires. He does not love me any less. He told you yesterday, today, and forevermore, I'm the same God. So his love is the same. His compassion is the same. His mercy is the same. And his mercies are new this morning in Jesus' mighty name. His faithfulness is guaranteed. And his faithfulness makes you to understand that he's reliable. When he says, I am a faithful God, that means he's assured. He's good. You've got that insurance policy. God is immeasurable. God is reliable. God is dependable. God is trustworthy. God is trustworthy. You trust in his immeasurable trustworthiness. So thank him for his mercies right now. Thank him for his mercies right now. Thank him for his mercies right now. Why do we thank him as every, every time we close? Because it is an appreciation that brings multiplication. Anything that you thank God for multiplies. Thank him for his mercy right now. Thank God for any mercy that you have seen in your life because he will definitely multiply. And as you continue to ask God for his mercy, let it, that be a regular part of your prayer life. Whenever you pray, ask God for his mercy. Thanking for showing mercy to others as well. Because when you don't see the mercy of God in others, how can you see it in yourself? Thank him when you see mercy at work with others as well. The Lord who is your God, the Lord who answers by fire, the Lord who is a God of answers, the Lord who is a God of possibilities, the Lord who is a God of the supernatural, the God who is God of mercy, takes pleasure in Zion. He takes pleasure in you who are in Zion. He takes pleasure on you who loves the cause of the gospel. He takes pleasure on you who are servants in the gospel. He takes pleasure in you being involved in the kingdom and or the kingdom of God, the expansion. If you have had even one inkling of, 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 of being interested in the expansion and the enlargement of God, you have been an evangelist, whatever you've done, whatever, when you win a soul, he takes pleasure. So he will make sure that his mercy is always available to you. Let's close right now. Time is gone. Thank you, Lord, for your word to us today. Blessed be your holy name in Jesus' mighty name. Lord, I want to appreciate you for your mercy. I want to appreciate you for the gift of life. I want to appreciate you for the privilege of knowing you and knowing your mercy. 
I want to appreciate you for the connection that we have with you. To you be all the glory and adoration in Jesus' mighty name. Lord, I pray that everyone in PBP and anyone under the sound of my voice right now, open us up to the mercy of others. Help us to be merciful and to show mercy to others as well who are in need of that mercy. Help us to be merciful to our generation in the name of Jesus Christ. Put fresh love inside of us, inside of our heart for your kingdom in Jesus' mighty name. Father, we apply for mercy in Jesus' name. We apply for mercy. We apply for mercy for ourselves, for our spouses, for our children. We apply for mercy for our siblings, all of our loved ones. We apply for mercy today, oh God, in Jesus' name. Father, we apply for mercy in our churches, in our ministries, in our businesses. Let the body of Christ receive the mercy and experience the mercy of God globally in Jesus' mighty name. We apply for mercy for our nations where we are based in Jesus' mighty name. We apply for mercy that affliction will come to an end, sufferings will come to an end. May your mercy bring immediate solutions to everything that has been frustrating us. In the name of Jesus Christ and the saints of God said, Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. The mercy and favor of God is always available to you. The mercy and the favor of God is always available to God, to you. Rest in that mercy. Father, as your mercies are new every morning, let your faithfulness continue to abound. May we continue to experience your compassion and your graciousness, O oh God. May we continue to experience triumph over every single judgment in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen and amen. Thank you so much for rising this morning in this beautiful um, is it a Wednesday? And it's a winter Wednesday. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. Amen.